Hello, this is Dave Myers with Paper Trail Financial. This is my first video regarding managing your accounts payable. Your accounts payable is a crucial element of your business cash conversion cycle. With inventory and receivables, the shorter the conversion time, the more positive effect on cash flow. With payables, it's the exact opposite. The faster payables turn over, the faster cash goes out the door, and the less you have on hand for other needs. In this first video, I'll go over how to use your QuickBooks statements to calculate your average payables conversion time. There are two simple ratios that we need to calculate. First is the AP turnover ratio, which is total cost of goods sold divided by the average balance in the accounts payable account. Uh, this tells us how many times on average payables turn over during the year. The second ratio is the accounts payable days outstanding. We're going to take 365 for the amount of days in a year divided by the payables turnover ratio. This is going to tell us how many times on average payables turn over each period. There are a couple of reports we want to run in QuickBooks. The first one's going to be the profit and loss. So we'll go to Company Financial Profit and Loss Statement. We want to make a couple of changes. So we click Modify. And I'll change the date to, in this case, 12-16 of the prior year. So we have a full year of results. And I want columns by month. We don't need the subaccounts here. So I can collapse this. And then we'll export it to Excel. In Excel, I'll change the page width to one page and fix the column. And I'll rename the sheet Profit and Loss. Now I can hit Alt-Tab and go back to QuickBooks. We can minimize the P&L. And I'll generate the balance sheet standard. I'm going to make the same modifications to this report. We'll change the dates to 12-16 of the prior year and we'll also have columns by month. We can collapse the subaccounts and also export this to Excel. In Excel, first I'll fix the column width so we can actually see the numbers. Um, I'll change this to a width of one page and to get this in the other workbook I want to go up to the View tab and use Arrange All and I'll choose horizontal and this lets us see both open workbooks at the same time. I, uh, I need to name this sheet for the balance sheet and then we can just hold down control and drag it to the first workbook so they're both in the same one. We don't need the new one so we can close it out without saving and expand the original. Now I'll create a third sheet and I will call this AP ratios and I'll widen some columns for our data first is going to be months then cost of goods sold and then the accounts payable balances and to make these stand out I will make them bold and underlined and centered Now for the months, I'll flip back over to the profit and loss and I will just highlight the months row, control C to copy it, go back to our new sheet. I want to use paste special and transpose so we go top to bottom and I'll remove the borders and I'm going to align these left. For cost of goods sold, we'll go back to the profit and loss again. I'll highlight the cogs row and then control C to copy it. Go back to our new sheet. I'm going to paste special again. This time we want to make sure we choose values so we bring over just the numbers and not the formulas from the worksheet and we're also going to choose transpose so we go top to bottom and I'll fix the number format. For accounts payable I'll flip over to the balance sheet. I'll highlight the AP row and then control C go back to our new sheet same as cogs we want to paste special values and transpose and I'll fix the number format and I think I'll make all of these bold now to calculate the ratios I'll put in our four headings 
First is our total cost that gets sold, then our average accounts payable. From that, we can calculate our AP turnover ratio, and from that, we can get our AP days ratio. And I'll highlight these and give them some format to stand out. I think I'll make them green, and I'll change the font to white. And I'll make our input cells bold. Our total cost of goods sold is right here. We copied it over from the PL. We'll just say equal to and click on it. For average accounts payable, we'll say equal AVE, and we can insert the average function and just highlight the 12 months of results we have. The accounts payable turnover is going to be total COGS divided by our average accounts payable balance. And I'll number four about this to reduce the decimal places. Our AP days ratio is going to be 365 days divided by our AP turnover ratio. And let me format this too. So what we get is an AP turnover ratio of 14.1, uh, which means AP is turning over on average 14 times a year. Uh, this results in an average turnover time of about every 26 days. Now I can tell by looking at the uh, at the information that there is a problem. We don't have any cost of goods sold or accounts payable for the first two weeks of the year we're using. So to correct this, I can just delete this row. It'll change our number somewhat. Then to fix the AP days ratio, I can go up to the formula bar and since we deleted 16 days here I'll just do 365 days minus 16 let Excel do the math and our AP days has gone up from 25.9 to 26.8 days now since payable timing is tied to vendor payment terms it helps to review them periodically uh, to do that in QuickBooks, we can go to Reports, and we'll choose the Vendor Contact List. And we'll modify the report, and on the Display tab, we can pull up Terms and insert that column. And here we can see that the majority of terms are net 30, but there are some net 15s and due on receipt. So the 25.9 uh, or 26.8 really uh, is a pretty good AP ratio for the current terms being offered by these vendors. In part two, I'll go more in depth regarding how to recognize trends in your accounts payable and its effect on cash flow.